What's up, my degenerates? Welcome to another episode of Plan Brie Uncut, sponsored by Revitalite, the fucking best drink in the world. I'm super hungover. I think my guest Sid here Absolutely. is a little bit hungover, so we're <laughs> dabbling into the Revitalite. It's the best shit ever. I'm going to need it this whole college tour, but welcome, Sid. I'm so happy to have you on the pod. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, of course. So if you guys don't know Sid, she's Sid Dollasign on TikTok. You have what, like 800,000 followers. Mm -hmm. Okay, when did you rack those bad boys up? Um, I think I started filming like a little bit before the pandemic. So like okay. end of 2019, beginning of 2020. Okay, so what would you say like you're known for content wise? Like why do people follow you? Honestly, I'd, that's a broad question. <laughs> it's such I a broad question. ask me that, but like so I guess others know. If I had to narrow it down, it would just be like relatability. Like okay. I do a lot of story times, like hookup stories, yeah. what to expect in college. Yeah. I saw. That's fucking great. I saw one and I was like, what the fuck? Okay. But you are a junior here at Penn State. So we're still at Penn State because we're still on the college tour. You're a junior, right? Yes, I am. And we were talking a little bit before we started recording. And this is obviously the dropout tour. And I was like... <laughs> Are you in classes? How is it going? And you were like, oh. uh, I am taking a little bit of time off. I was saying how it was ironic this was called the dropout tour because I am heavily considering maybe possibly dropping out of college. <laughs> that is um, a question that's on the table. I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know if it's something that I'm passionate about. You know what I mean? Like, okay. I didn't want to continue investing my time and money into something that, like, isn't going to pay off in the ways that I wanted to. And I know that like content creation is something that I'm super passionate about. So maybe I'll continue doing that. Maybe I'll get my real estate license like everybody else that doesn't know what they want to do with their lives. I was, like, <laughs> it was like, um, does this mean I didn't make it in life? Yeah. Getting my real like, estate considering license. getting my real estate it's license for no reason. It's, but that's when your dreams are crushed. You get yeah, your real estate exactly. license. Exactly. But my dreams aren't crushed yet. So no, you we'll didn't get it. You out. didn't get it yet. So <laughs> what are you or were you in school for? Um, I was in school for rehabilitation services. Okay, so absolutely nothing that you no, are doing now. Absolutely nothing to do with what I'm doing now, which I think was a big indicator for me that mm -hmm. like, okay, I need to take a step back and really reassess what path I'm on mm -hmm. right now because content creation, rehabilitation services, not very similar at all. No, so. no, not at all. Well, I mean, I was in school for pre-med and here I am. To, <laughs> oh, I wow. mean, it's the opposite <laughs> yeah. of that. But I was in the same boat where I was just in class doing school, looking at it as what the fuck am I doing here? Exactly. I'm wasting, first of all, so much time, so much money. What, exactly. I'm going to get this degree, not use it and be miserable and then miss out on all these opportunities. So I think if you're in a position that you are in and I was in, it's a smart move to yeah. like go for what you want. But I'm not encouraging everyone to drop out of <laughs> yeah, college. Yeah, don't stay in school. Kids. Like for real, it's it's only if there's like an opportunity presented to you or if you're miserable because college really isn't for exactly. everyone. And for me, it was like both of those things. So yeah, exactly. So um, here at Penn State, I didn't know how fucking crazy it was. Have yeah. you got to like experience it? Because I know you have to be 21 to get into most of the bars, which is kind of crazy because I know a lot of the schools I go to, you can get in with the fake everywhere. Yeah. Well, right now I'm 21 in the state of Arizona, um, according to <laughs> yes, my fake. Yes. And it works at a couple places, but they're definitely a lot more strict here than most towns that I've been in. Yeah. But I mean, you don't necessarily have to go to the bars to experience like the Penn State culture. Like the frats are pretty fucking wild too. So yeah, they are. But you were saying, because our next stop is West Virginia, that West Virginia is even crazier. Oh my God. Yes. People are going to be so fucking mad about yeah, that. They're going to be mad. No, not to shit on Penn State at all, but Morgantown is like another level. I think I've seen that they're ranked like number one party school in the nation yeah, so it's yeah it's number next level for sure school. i mean i when i first started this college tour i i don't know anything about schools because i'm not involved in any like i don't know even what the big 10 schools are i don't yeah. know anything about football <laughs> i don't know like the, oh, any sec schools i know nothing yeah so i just looked up like craziest party schools to go to <laughs> and then I was just, like, quick google search like and what, what is crazy is I went to a school with 4,000 people. Oh, wow. So it was like high school. Yeah. And then coming into this, I was like, oh, I hate that. fucking shit. But I also enjoyed a small school. I don't yeah. know if I would thrive here. Uh, I don't know. See, I went to a really small high school and it okay. was like everybody knew everybody's mm -hmm. business. Like if I sent a nude, I don't know, like it would get the across teachers town. Have so it. The teachers have it yeah. in their camera roll. Like, <laughs> and so it's just everyone was watching what you were doing at mm -hmm. all moments. And so like coming to Penn State, I was like, I can really do whatever the fuck I want You can, like, here. recreate yourself. I can recreate myself. And if I fuck somebody on Tuesday, I can walk around campus on Wednesday without seeing them. You yeah, know you what can I mean? fuck like, another guy on Tuesday and like, exactly. they would never even exactly. meet each other. Exactly, they would never cross paths. So it's, yeah. like, it's just, I don't know, it's so fun and, like, convenient because I can really, like, 
when I first got here, I definitely went crazy. Just, just like, like do whatever the fuck exactly, you want. Exactly. Doing whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. Because it's like a culture shock. You're like, exactly. wow. It's such a culture shock. And for sure. especially here when we were driving into Penn State, it's nothing. This could have a dome over it and it could be its own yes. little fucking world. Yes, it is bizarre. Our own universe. Yeah. It's insane. It's a happy valley and people are like disturbingly nice here. Yeah. Like I was kind of getting weirded out. I'm like, <laughs> why is it? You're like, this is kind of creepy. Yeah, it's like, I'm not used to it, but it's crazy. And Penn State is crazy. And I think coming to a school from coming to a school so big from a small school mm -hmm. is like just recreating yourself entirely exactly and when you got here what was it like trying to find friends because I have so many young listeners who are going to college and especially coming from high school and like COVID yeah. what the fuck was it like just like making friends and how do you do it at such a big school I know it is the corniest fucking thing ever and you hear it all the time, but you literally just have to put yourself out there. Like mm -hmm. put yourself in a position to where you're like, I'm going to say hello and I'm going to get to know these people and I'm not going to care what the fuck they think of me. Mm -hmm. And this is how I'm going to make friends and this is how I'm going to socialize. I know um, our NSO, like new student orientation, mm -hmm. it was a lot more of a condensed group of people just because we were like going through classes and what to expect. And so through that, I was able to meet like a small group of people and then they met people and I met them and it was just mm -hmm. like, after time passes, like you meet so many new people and you experience so many new things. It, like it all comes together pretty easily. I'd say. Yeah, I think so too. It's I think it's a lot easier than high school because mm -hmm. it's not as clicky and exactly. uh, there's not like the mean girls. The exactly. There's obviously going to be bitches you don't fuck with all yeah. everywhere you go, but it's not as hard to really find the people that you like. But in when you first started, did you join a sorority? Were you doing clubs? What were you doing? No, I didn't join a sorority. Um, I actually took the fall semester off coming into college. So I came like halfway through the year, which also was another. Oh, that's kind of that hard. Happened. Yeah, it made it like a little bit harder for me to meet people coming in. But um, no, I definitely didn't rush and didn't have any plans to. I feel like Greek life wasn't really like something that appealed to me or like. I think really, we're like, on the same thing. page. About yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, I think I we're on the same like, page. <laughs> I, don't, I never want to shit on it because I mean Hannah's in a fucking sorority yeah and so Hannah's cool but there's I think it's <laughs> yeah she's like barely in it. I think it's just the idea of when I'm sure your for you page was just like bombed with like rush TikTok when oh it was my going God, on yeah. it's the idea of people sitting there and looking at your appearance <laughs> looking at your followers looking at anything that you do and just judging everything yes is scary and then placing you in a spot where they think you belong it just yes. seems so fucked up in my head and i i really don't like it it's very culty i saw another tiktok on my for you page that was like a three minute long documentary style video about comparing greek life to cults and i was like this is scarily spot accurate on, like this on. is spot on and it's like i don't want to be judged or put into a specific group of people based on like what i wear or like my mother's tax bracket like yeah I don't, this, yeah I don't, know. I don't really fuck with it's it it's crazy one of my friends um she rushed at bama and mm -hmm. she dropped because they were like evil the they tried to ruin to her life at, yeah and she she rushed and she got into it so she was in the sorority for i think like two years and when um the other girls were rushing and she was older and she was like reviewing them before they would sit them down and have pictures of all like their top girls that they wanted to have so they yeah. already had all the girls they wanted in the sorority before they even met them so, then, so what was the point? then when they have like their rush and they have their bid days whatever all the girls that they wanted they have them sit in a certain section and then all the girls that they didn't think were cool enough pretty enough hot enough rich enough they would be sitting in other chairs that were different colors and when she told me that because she just like she realized how fucked up it was but I think a lot of girls too they're scared that they're not gonna have friends if they don't join yeah a sorority. which is so sad and so untrue so untrue so untrue and like i, I kind of understand for that myself because that is the party life like the social life is being in a sorority or fraternity yeah i don't think it has to be as toxic as it is no not at all yeah it's, it's like it's, giving mean girls it's like giving that's exactly really it's really giving. mean girls and it's so crazy because i know i have a lot of fans who are sorority girls so i always feel so mean yeah. that i like shit on them but they're always so sweet when i meet them but then like uh, oh, i don't want to say it no don't say I, it. So there's like a bunch of girls who didn't pay mind to hannah before like hannah is my like intern and they didn't pay mind to her before that she was doing this college tour with me like yeah. would walk past her and ignore her and then they see her on campus and she's with me so she's fucking clouded i don't even know what that means it's so stupid <laughs> and now they're like oh my gosh i miss you so much like it's so nice to see you how have you been it's like fuck you and i think yeah, a lot no, of that's... girls do that in sororities 
All right, a little quick commercial break for something spicy. We got Dipsy, okay? Dipsy is stories. They're online. So let's think about this. Sometimes you're not in the mood, right, to just go ahead and start watching some porn of someone getting railed, right? You're like, damn, it's a little much right now. I kind of want to get intimate. That's what Dipsy's for. So Dipsy, there's personalized stories on this website. So if you have, like, you're daydreaming about, you know, this kid that used to live next door, your friend from high school, your best friend's boyfriend if you want to get a little crazy there's stories for everything and it's a lot more intimate and it's a lot less gross you know you can think about it you can envision it in your head and the stories are great it's awesome uh dipsy i fuck with dipsy you know what fuck Pornhub. i'm just gonna go on dipsy all the time so but for listeners of this show dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash plan breed that's d-i-p-s-e-a stories.com slash plan breed so i think you guys should all check it out that's 30 days free so if you don't like it, you can end it. And I'm sure you will enjoy it. Let's get back to the show. It's it's like that. And it's also like that even just like going to frats and stuff like on the weekends. Normally people wouldn't say hi to me. And now like that they see that I have a TikTok following. They're like, oh, hey, yeah. Sid, like, what's up? Like, yeah, I want to talk about that. How has like social life changed for you in school? When did you really gain your following? Honestly, not until like last winter. I started doing a like hookup series. OK. And it was like surveys that I sent to like everyone that I've ever hooked up oh oh yes 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 that's (laughs) fucking awesome (laughs) and so those videos started to really blow up and I remember I gained like I don't know like 150,000 followers in like a week or something and that's when people started to actually like recognize me when I went out and it was like a oh like do you make TikToks like I've seen you on my for Mm -hmm. you page like can we get a picture like that kind of stuff and it like definitely changed my social life because all of a sudden people wanted to start like being really friendly and social with me and so once you have the followers it's weird right which like It's cool to get recognized, but also it's like, would you still want to be my friend if I didn't post this TikTok? No, exactly. Yeah. So it's just kind of awkward, but it is weird. And it's weird to navigate because I'm in the same boat where now people just want to take pictures, want to be friends, want to hang out with me, want to party with me. But at the end of the day, it's like, if I wasn't on TikTok or if I didn't have followers, would you even fuck with me at all? So that's why I have like, I have only one friend. (laughs) I have my one friend, Grace. And then it's just us two, me, TiVo and Hannah doing this whole thing together. I'm like, I don't even have a crew that I could bring because I have like no friends anymore because I don't know who's using me or who's not, which which really sucks. But I want to talk about your little hookup (laughs) series. So can you explain for people that don't know what it was? Okay, so basically I sent a Google form survey and made a Google form survey Mm -hmm. and I put a few different questions on there regarding like their experience during the hookup and I sent it to like everyone that I've ever hooked up with like you really did no I really did this is real this is real life like people (laughs) you haven't even like hooked up with a while ago and then you sent it to them the person I lost my virginity to when I was 18 like that I hadn't spoken to in three years I'm like (laughs) hey um Brandon hope you're doing well by the way uh do you mind filling out the survey (laughs) that's crazy were you like nervous or were you just like fuck it honestly i feel like being on social media has made me like lose all sense of like shame or like right? same i just have the biggest balls now yeah, i'll like, do fucking I anything say don't anything. give a fuck yeah. at all so i was just like you know what go ahead like mm-hmm. here's the survey fill it out if you want mm-hmm. or not i don't know and we'll see and yeah i kind of just said fuck it did a lot of people fill it out almost everyone filled it out and what do you think they were like honest or um i think some of them i could tell that they were being honest because well some of them like gassed it like some okay. of my exes were like overly rude like they'd be like mm. oh rate my looks on a scale from one to ten they'd be like one i'm like oh you my god not, you didn't date me thinking that i was a yeah, one you can't that just one doesn't 10, make sense so. but yeah um i don't know how accurate the answers were but i was surprised with the amount that i got okay do you think they helped you a little bit <sighs> i think the only reason i'm gonna say no is because most of the time i feel like and I, this is not to shit on men. Actually, it is no, to shit on men. No, we can shit on men. This shit on is men. what That's this podcast fine. is. So, <laughs> great. <laughs> I feel like typically the man has a much more enjoyable experience than the woman does. Always, yeah. So it's like I was expecting to get better answers mm-hmm. from men being like, oh, yeah, like I had such a great time. And then I read the survey and I was like, I don't know who was in the room when we were having sex, but you had a way better time than I did. Yeah. Um, because your answers are way higher than mine would have been. Yeah. So I don't really think that they helped much just because like I knew their answers were going to be Yeah. Like, and men decent. just like the, if you're, you're having sex, you're enjoying it. It <laughs> exactly. doesn't matter what it's going to be like. Know, they're happy to be there. Yeah. Oh, men. Good old men. Yeah. I fucking hate it. But um, I also want to talk about I saw one of your TikToks where you said that your ex's <laughs> dad tried to hook up with you or something (laughs) along those lines is this real is this true is that fucking crazy this is funny because literally yesterday at like 3 a.m i wake up to a text message 
from, from the dad ex, no from my ex <laughs> and he's like he's like why did you post this tiktok like for what reason and i was like how did you know it was about your dad <laughs> oh my gosh so it was real though it was real oh this my really gosh happened explain no. it explain it i never like <laughs> okay so this happened like a fat minute ago but i was dating this kid and he had a dill and yeah. so we were dating for a while and like i would always go over and he would like cook food and like mm -hmm. he was just so nice also like side note a convicted felon but that's like <laughs> you know that's a story for another time okay okay but i mean it kind of made him even hotter because okay. i was like okay your mugshot like wow super cute see, love daddy. It. okay we love we love <laughs> exactly. a convicted like god arrest me like okay <laughs> anyway so we broke up and he was very like considerate like he would text me and be like are you okay how are you doing Dilf or the dilf okay the okay. dilf and so he would text me and he'd be like i just wanted to check up on you like i know you just got broken up with how are you doing and i remember a week after the breakup i was posted up in the middle of a frat basement like drinking my ass off trying mm -hmm. to like get over this kid and i get a text from his dad and he's like have you eaten have you eaten like did you eat yet like because you seem like really sad like yeah. do you want me to come over and cook you food i was like you know what so I left the frat in the middle of the night. Shut the fuck up. Made my mascara like run down my face a little to make it look like I was crying. Yeah. Put on some sweatpants and I was like, oh, I haven't eaten actually. Now that you say that. Shut I'm up. A wreck. Come over. Did he <laughs> fucking come over? Comes over literally 2 a.m. and cooks me steak. Like a whole steak. Are you fucking kidding I me? I wish I could. How could I make like. That no. is like, unbelievable. This Did he like try to fuck? So or he didn't you try could... to fuck. He didn't try to fuck. But he would make comments like oh how are you like still stuck on my son like you're so sexy like oh uh -huh. God, it was kind of like a, oh don't kill yourself you're so sexy you know what that's i mean like so that kind of thing like yeah. It, yeah it was did your ex know that daddy was coming to cook you steak he te he texted me i literally have the screenshots to this day like just in case something happens and i'm like you need you need i could have fucked your dad yeah. you know what i mean like uh -huh. he texted me he was like don't tell anyone that i came over like our friendship can be kept a little secret i'm like no way like wait that's no. like a dirty little like, secret this is such a, that's crazy well not anymore, well, not like, anymore. <laughs> we're broadcasting it to the world anyways. but that's fucking crazy i couldn't imagine i feel like i would want to fuck my ex's dad just to get back at i my really ex. like genuinely was considering it but i feel like it would have been the last straw for the kid like, I mean, like yeah just been like wow this is like, it this is it i'm done now my like, dad's finished. cooler than me I he's hotter than now. me like that would have been yeah my like, ex fucked my dad <laughs> that would be so bad imagine your ex fucks your mom oh my god i couldn't like i couldn't <laughs> i could never imagine First of all, i can never look at my mom again no never like i wouldn't respect my dad if i was that guy anymore i'd be like what the fuck never and i made the tiktok and i posted it and people thought that it was like me talking about a book or something or like a movie that i'd seen i like, i saw it and i was like no way no like no way but then i watched happened. like all your tiktok was like maybe actually <laughs> maybe no, nothing that i post is like made up it's all happened not necessarily like recently but yeah a lot of the time i'll like archive the stories and like mm -hmm. wait a year or two so that it's like okay it's for me not to post fresh about. i have a lot it's of stories fresh. that i want to yes. talk about but i need to wait like, exactly the year mark where it's like not gonna hurt people exactly. and it's like i can actually that's why that's why i it. waited i was like let me wait this out yeah exactly now and I, I think that's why also we're popular on social media because we have so many stories and it feels like we've lived so many lives exactly there's and just so much to talk exactly. about exactly i love it but um since we were talking about your ex and breakups have you ever had a really bad breakup uh honestly i don't really think so i, I think haven't either most of the time and this is gonna sound kind of cunty but like I'm usually the one that's doing the breakups. I've always like, been the breaker upper. Exactly. <laughs> and I don't know what it is about because I'm a big relationship person. Like I date. I'm a serial dater. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's like a good I'm, I always I'm have probably, a boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah. I like have been in multiple long-term relationships, but for some reason, every time like I'll either just like get bored or get complacent or mm -hmm. comfortable and then I'll just be like, mm. and then which, which sucks about that. I find myself in relationships a lot. Not recently. Thank fucking God. Cause it's at like the, part where it should be for me yeah. it's like the two-year mark where I'm like usually okay, but it's it's going well but I find myself being attracted to other people while I'm in the relationship mm. and I always know like that's just a part of like human nature and it's yeah. not bad you're always going to be attracted to other people or like have little crushes yeah but I find myself like wanting to act on it in relationships and yeah. I don't but that's where I'm like why would I stay in it and I think it's more it's more hurtful to both of us if I would stay in the relationship. And then I find myself having to break up with people for really no reason. Cause exactly. it's like, oh, I just don't really fuck with you anymore. Exactly. And it's the worst feeling. I feel so bad breaking someone's heart. And that's how it, that's how it is for me too. I feel like not that I've, I would rather end the relationship than cheat. You know what I yes, mean? So yes. like the positions that I've been in a couple times like that, I'm just like, okay, let me cut it off before I like actually fucking destroy this person. Exactly.
All right, guys, quick commercial break. I've talked about this before, how I absolutely do not have the patience to go to the nail salon to sit there to get my nails done. They're so expensive, and then you leave a week later, they look like shit. But what we have now is Olive and June. So Olive and June is a mani-pedi system, is what I got from there. It's fucking awesome. So they have so many nail polishes that last seven days, and they don't chip. It literally looks like you got your nails professionally done. And it comes with, like, you know when you have to take your nail polish off, and it's like a whole fucking thing, and you got to get the cotton swabs, you got to get the nail polish remover this is like the best invention in the world it's like this little sponge thing that you just stick your finger in all the nail polish comes off it's fucking awesome I did my nails with it my roommate Grace did her nails with it they look great I think she brought some of the nail polish with her I travel with it and I'm always on the go so um, I want to bring this shit with me you always need to have your nails done and you can fit it perfectly in your bag it's amazing I love Olive and June and uh, I suggest getting the Olive and June Manny system with six polishes so what it does is it breaks down to just two dollars a Manny okay I used to spend $40 for getting one. It's uh, it's hard out here. You know, it's a struggle. We don't have a lot of money to spend and we always need our nails done because it changes the game. So um, oliveandjune.com slash you can visit oliveandjune.com slash plan and use code plan for 20% off your Manny system. This is an exclusive offer you can only get here. So that's O-L-I-V-E-A-N-D-J-U-N-E dot com slash plan code plan for 20% off of your first Manny system. Olive and June dot com slash plan code plan. Let's get back to the show. Yeah, exactly. I found myself. I found myself being a cheater for my oh, first no. real relationship. <gasps> okay. First off, though, I tried to break up with this motherfucker three times and he was straight up like, no, no, we're good. <laughs> no, you're not we're allowed. so good. I was like, no, I'm so not good. <laughs> like, I don't want to date you like, anymore. I insist. Like, yeah. I, he was like, no, it's good. We're going to be good. I was like, no, I don't think so. So after trying to break up with him three times, I finally like did but he in his head was like this is just a break like we're gonna get back together <laughs> so in my head we're broken up in his head we're on a break and that's when I kind of like cheated I guess yeah but I wouldn't really consider it cheating because I didn't cheat on him when we were like in love or whatever yeah that makes sense yeah cheating's like, bad though I don't condone cheating cheat, I think cheating's fucked up yeah it is fucked up I've never been cheated on and like I'm me praying that that knowledge. never happens yeah, yeah. Don't I let always me find out I don't always let me say that out. like I've never been cheated on but I'm like I it actually don't happen. fucking know but like don't let me find out because someone will die. Like I'm afraid I, for my reaction. I know because I know I can be crazy, but I've never had the opportunity to be crazy because I've never found out. I don't know what I would do if I found out like my boyfriend right now was cheating on me. What are the lengths he would go to? Well, see, the thing is, I don't even want to begin to think about it because I'm the kind of crazy that like, I'll get mad if you like another girl's picture on Instagram. Like, yeah, me I too. Even, me I don't too. even, if you breathe the same air as another female, me it's like, too. you should be a virgin when I meet you. I like, know, I know. Isn't that so fucked up? But then <laughs> I can do whatever I want. And I can do, exactly. Like, I'm still I trying to find back, the love of my life, but like, yeah. you're in a relationship. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I sit back and look at it and I'm very self-aware that that's not healthy. Like, I'm like, I can do yeah. whatever I want, but he can't do anything. And I know it's bad, but I'll never change. Oh, see, I don't know. I think, I think I'm starting to change. Like, are you? I think finding somebody that you like actually have like a really fucking good connection with mm -hmm. you're like wow suddenly i'm finding myself becoming soft like i am yeah, getting yeah. soft now like, i'm soft yeah. now i actually like don't want to hook up with other people like what for once in my life i I'm know like, it is weird <laughs> i know weird. i went out the other night and well now since i'm living like this crazy fucking life there's just yeah. so many guys that just throw yourself a fuck exactly. themselves at me now and it's weird and i don't like saying that because it sounds like i'm being like a fucking yeah. No, but I, I'm true. getting like, guys thrown at me, but dick in my face. But <laughs> I, I get so uncomfortable now and I'm like, oh, I actually really fuck with my boyfriend because I'm yes. not even like giving these people attention and it feels good. Exactly. Like, yeah, I love it. But I think if I were to get cheated on, I'm trying to think of the lengths you would go. So let me ask you some rapid fire questions. Hmm, okay. Are you, okay. Are you the type of crazy where you are, you want to mentally ruin their life or are we going to physically do things? See, physically, I stand at about like 4'10", 97 pounds wet. Yeah, you're so it's fucking like, tiny. Maybe, yeah, we're going to go with the mental aspect of it. <laughs> I don't know what, uh, side note, I don't know what's up with everyone at Penn State being fucking tiny. <laughs> like, everyone's fucking <laughs> Is tiny. Is that an everyone thing? The meet and greet, I was like, holy shit, I had to bend my knees to take pictures with every single fucking person. And then you walk in, I thought you would at least be like, taller than Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> you're the same fucking height. Wait, how tall are you? I'm 5'2". Oh, okay. Oh, are you the same yeah, thing? I'm literally like 4'11". Oh, so you're even like, fucking smaller. Yeah, I'm not even five. Feet. Oh, yeah. Oh, Everyone's yeah. fucking tiny. Okay, so yeah, you would have to go mentally. It would have to. And I feel like that cuts deeper anyways. Oh, like, it does. Let's get him mentally. I want to like, if my boyfriend, I don't want to like manifest it. I'm getting scared. Like if my boyfriend <laughs> cheated on me. Okay, if it, in the in a past life, if a boyfriend cheated on me and I found out, I would. Fuck his dad. Do. Yeah, if he was hot. <laughs> I don't think I could fuck like an old, like gross <laughs> dilf. 
it wouldn't be a dildo like saggy balls yeah no that's disgusting we were actually talking about that on another podcast how gross a penis is gonna look when it's like 60 years old and the balls and it's just it's gross like a vagina just stays intact everything on a man just starts coming down sorry tivo everything (laughs) just starts coming down (laughs) but yeah no i think i would i might slash some tires like i might do some crazy shit yeah i heard you only slash three though because if you insurance yeah if you slash all four it's like replace my insurance or something yeah that's a pro tip to the crazy girl you didn't hear that from me (laughs) not that i've been researching that at all no but i think i would like i would like get in his mom's head and like try to uh, i would like i would like manipulate through his mom and like make the mom think that the son is such a shitty person and then i would want the mom to take it out on the son because then Mm. a son can't bear the mother you've thought of you've sat there at night like and planned this through Everything this is happened. written down in your notes app yeah it like, is you i have just have a whole down. notes apps do you have any fucking crazy <laughs> shit in your notes app? so much i think like the weirdest thing in my notes is just i didn't know that not everybody did this i thought it was a very common thing i have like a list of like everyone that i've ever hooked up with but sometimes mm-hmm. i'll talk about it and people be like no that's really fucking weird like why do you have that i thought yeah see i'm like a serial dater so i don't really like hook up with people i just yeah. have boyfriends so I mean, but my list, like the weird part is like from my very first kiss. It's like everyone that I've really? ever had any sort of physical contact. Wait, with I ever. wish I did that because I can't remember. Like there used to be times where me and my friends would go to like the Xfinity Lawn Center and people from Mass will know what that is. It's like a concert. You know, when you have like the concerts and it's the lawn, you sit yeah. on the green, like okay. the grass, whatever. And we would just see how many people we could make out with and who could win. Oh my God. How disgusting is that? Like, I wish I had a list, though, of like how many people I did. So you <laughs> have a list of everyone. One. Yeah, like, for real. <laughs> So you have yeah, a list of no, everyone. it's a list of literally everyone. And I also have like, let me pull it out. There's a code. I have like codes for them. I think I have like their zodiac signs. Their oh my like God. what I would rate them. It's very OCD, and it's so you're almost, really like into this. I'm really into it, and like it's from literally my first kiss from when I was like 15 years old. Oh my God! And they have like code names like fit issues, couch pee, um, lipstick, Ditched. had a fiance, go oh nuts. Oh my God! This is awesome. Yeah, Skechers, like just random like code words that's fucking awesome yeah. so are you big into um zodiac signs i used to not be but my old roommate was like super into them so she kind she of got like got into me it? into them yeah okay and now i like it kind of makes sense when i find out somebody's sign and i look into their okay, chart so I'm what like, do you think hmm. about what are your thoughts on gemini's oh uh, i don't know i only ever hear shitty things about I Gemini's. Know. are you a gemini i'm a gemini <laughs> i only also ever hear shitty things about scorpios too and i'm a scorpio so it's okay like, yeah we can both just be awful together okay, yeah i i always hear so, such shitty things about gemini's and i think a lot of it's true but not like the shitty aspect but i do have like two completely different personalities like i think yeah. i'm two different people when i'm doing this shit i'm a com- like not a completely different person but i'm way more outgoing yeah. and then in my real life i just like won't talk that makes sense. I feel like that's also just like a social media thing in general. Like yeah. When I'm in my private space, like with my friends, I'm a lot more like chill, I feel like. And then yeah. on social media, I'm like really outgoing and talk like talkative. I don't know. Yeah. So with social media, because I know you're thinking about maybe possibly dropping out. Yeah. Of maybe possibly so out. how has this social media kind of changed your life? Because I think it I think when you get to the point where you're like, I can drop out of school, it yeah. really does change your life. So how has oh, things absolutely. like changed for you? I feel like everything's changed. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't even think a single aspect of my life has, like, remained the same after growing a following on social media. I feel like I've gained so many new friends, a fuck ton of new opportunities. Mm -hmm. Like, my entire, like, this is my job now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which is really fucking crazy to say because I never would have anticipated. It's so scary. You never know when it's going to end. Exactly. It's fleeting. Like, it's it's very fleeting. So you have to kind of, like, go balls to the wall. Like, I'm going to, like, drop out and pursue this wholeheartedly because you can't, like, you can't half ass it yeah you cannot half ass it and it's it's like a lot of people are like really judgmental you know what i mean they're like oh are you sure you want to do this like Mm -hmm. you sure you want to drop out i don't know if this is the right idea i know i know i know what i'm passionate about and i know that like if i'm passionate about something i'm not gonna half ass it so so there you go yeah so there you go i love that what do your parents think about it so (laughs) my dad does not know that i'm considering dropping out my mom knows um she's super chill she's always been really supportive and i think she sees the potential with what i'm doing and Mm -hmm. like how it's paying off how people are liking my content and Mm -hmm. stuff like that but my dad doesn't really know a lot about social media so to him it's just kind of like 
what are you doing? Like, I what know. Is and this? that's what really sucks. Cause that's the same thing with my parents and I'm doing all this crazy shit and I want to be able to like show them and have them understand, but there's just no understanding yeah. to people who are dinosaurs. Like no, they're genuinely. so fucking old. My, my parents are like 60, so they yeah. really don't get it and they don't use their phones. They know nothing. Like my dad kind of sees it on TikTok, but my mom is still convinced I'm going to go back to school and finish. Like she yeah. says it to me every time. She's like, you promise, right? You're going to finish your degree. And school will always be there. Yeah. Always. I, I always try to tell myself that. But I also don't want to be like 40 in college. Yeah. You can be like 40 low key in college. Like I know. Like you can take like classes. online classes. Yeah. You like, can get your degree literally whenever. It is scary with social media though, knowing, it, actually not knowing anything. Because you yeah. have no idea when your following could tank, when TikTok could get deleted, when the next exactly. app's going to come out. I remember out. last year when I thought TikTok was getting banned, I was having like a crisis. Me I was too. like, what the fuck is going on? I was on kind right of now? embarrassed of how like yeah. upset, <laughs> how I, upset was. I was. I was like, this is pathetic. I like, know. And I just got hired at Barstool. So I was like, they're going to fire me. <laughs> I'm literally going to get fired and then I'm going to have to go back to school and with my head all, down. Like, a hoax. Like literally. Yeah, it was happened. a big hoax. That was, was like, crazy. Okay. That was actually so weird that TikTok was in so much trouble and trying to get yeah. deleted when there's so many other problems in the world. Exactly. There's so much more to worry so, about. So many bigger problems. <laughs> but um, what I like to do, I like to share crazy stories on this podcast. So do okay. you have, I know I saw a lot of them on your TikTok, but do you yeah. want to share like a crazy hookup story or any crazy thing that's happened to you in college? Because after high school, you might have crazy high school stories but once you come into the college world some crazy shit happens well i was actually kind of a big fucking nerd in high school were like, you yes i was the person like in marching band like shut the play fuck i up. played tennis like i did like model un like you were was in, in marching debate band? club yeah and i wasn't even the worst part is i wasn't in marching band because i played an instrument i was in marching was band marching? because <laughs> i marched <laughs> at the front of the the front of the marching band with like the flag that said like Dover area high school like shut <laughs> up oh my god wait I'm gonna sound like such a cunt right now because I was like such like a cheerleader in high school oh, no. what is what are the band kids like do they fuck like <laughs> no they be fucking bro like they, they fuck so much fuck. dude they fuck so much right I was did track and there was a bunch of band kids and they would have like orgies in the woods dude I'm not even kidding we had this like band closet where like everyone would put their like trombones or whatever and like we'd walk in and this guy would just be getting like domed by like the clarinet player yeah, like, like they <laughs> fuck band kids fuck, fuck more than like football so players much, in high school like, under the bleachers on the band bus like every they're they just fuck. like horny little fuckers they it's fuck. crazy okay so so they're like chill though they were chill. They're pretty chill <laughs> they're some chill, of them were a little fucking. questionable okay yeah. um yeah but no they were chill but i think like i definitely like i was a virgin until after i graduated high school like okay then you just like very, fuck it. yeah but okay that's so, crazy let's see what was the question crazy crazy yeah just like a stories. crazy fucking story that you have that you want to share because people love eat that shit up um probably my most embarrassing college moment happened my freshman year first semester and it was the first time that i had ever hooked up with a college guy and so i thought that it was like the biggest deal ever i was mm -hmm. like i'm gonna marry this man yeah i love him already mm -hmm. and so i went to text my best friend her name's mickey um and i have her in my phone as mickey m-i-k-i -I. I type in the first three letters and i send a, a slew of texts it's like just fucked this frat guy biggest dick i've ever taken in my entire life i'm gonna marry him should probably get tested for an std after this <laughs> then like four minutes later i get a text back and it says sid not sure that you meant to send this to me uh oh. glad you're having fun in college but stay safe i look at the name and it's Mike, M-I-K-E, her dad. <laughs> Shut oh. the fuck up. I accidentally texted my best friend's dad that I just took a no! really large dick. Oh, my and God. And that I was going to get tested for an STD, which is really fun. And I, fun. You, yeah. did you, how did you play that off? Um, I did it. I cried. <laughs> I would have been like, oh my gosh, this and is then, a prank. Like, this was a yeah, then I was like, oh, LOL, like, sorry, my phone got taken. Like, it wasn't me. No, I was just like, I'm so sorry. Like, that was just meant to be like silly little girl talk with my friend oh you know? my god that's traumatizing and he was like no don't be sorry and then i went to like their thanksgiving dinner like the next year the next semester i would or never show my and face I, like, again oh i didn't want to i was like can i please not go to this she I was like never. it's fine like he thinks it's so funny and we just like oh it was so awkward uh, definitely so the most embarrassing awkward. moment of that's my like entire life. all time send the wrong text like story and now every time i send a text i will triple te i will triple check to make sure that's going to the yeah, right yeah i always person. triple check because whenever i take screenshots and then i try to send them to show other people <laughs> i send them to the person that oh, I'm, i take the, the screenshots that's what i always fuck how up do you doing. like how do you recover from that you there's no recovering from that there's no recovering so from that. Like, what, yeah what i wasn't about to talk about you yeah, i was gonna tell us yeah. what do you say sorry 
<laughs> I, I just I just wanted to show you what you said. Like Yeah, like look at what you just fucking said. Yeah. Does that make sense? No. I, like, I mean I guess you could that's the only way you could probably play it off. But even then it's like no. Yeah. You're no, not gonna it's, it's fucked that. up. So uh, relationship wise right now, what what is it looking like for Sid? <laughs> what is the what is it like? Um, <laughs> I am content right now. You're content? I'm content with where I'm at right now. Okay. I don't want to jinx anything, but Okay. All right, so really you're 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 with someone? <laughs> uh oh, we're exposing, yeah. We're getting the tea, um, kind yes. of. I am with someone. Okay, okay. <laughs> Can I get the words out of my mouth? Yeah. It's so weird to like say that I'm with someone, especially because I'm so used to not like being officially with someone. Mm-hmm. And like all my stories are like, yeah, like casual hookups, like crazy college stories. Yeah. And now that I'm like actually with someone, it's like uncomfortable to get the words out of my mouth. Do you, but, yeah. do you find yourself um trying to change your content a little now that you're with someone are you like wanting to hold back on the hookup stories because you don't want them to see them or hear them it's always like a reminder thing where i'm like hey just so you know if i post this on tiktok like it happened at least a year ago and has Mm -hmm. no relevance to who i am right now and it's also one thing that's been like really weighing heavy on my mind is like what if his mom sees my tiktok yeah (laughs) right yeah what if his mom sees my tiktok and is like what who the hell is my child dating yeah my boyfriend's mom had to kind of just like accept it (laughs) that's what i think is gonna have to happen the Mm -hmm. only thing that's like kind of making me a little bit more comfortable is that he has a little sister who's like around our age and i think she like maybe i don't know i think she would like fuck with it but she could like tell the mom listen yeah like this is like yeah this is fine this is normal hopefully followers whatever or she'll think it's really weird but like i don't know we'll see when it gets there it depends on the personality of the mom it's pretty fresh so we'll have to We'll, we'll have, have to, to see. Find out. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll, have to see. we'll see where that goes. But since I think it's really cool, since you were like a fucking band kid in high school, <laughs> and then just like came to college and complete. Not that there's anything wrong with that. There's but, nothing wrong with but, being in the market, but you yeah. completely changed your. I don't know persona. Not, yeah. not not necessarily who you were, but you completely like flipped a switch. I think it's not really that like my persona changed i think i was always this way i was just afraid to be this way openly Mm -hmm. um just because again like the high school i went to was so small everybody knew everybody's business Mm -hmm. so i was like okay i'm gonna remain a pure little virgin and i'm not gonna talk about boys or anything and then when i got to college it was like i can really do whatever i want you don't have all the eyes on you but now you have all the eyes on you but now i have all the eyes on me so it's like crazy but in a good way though i feel like in a very accepting way people have been like yeah like you're talking about things that like we all do and we just don't want to talk about them. So. I think TikTok has made things so, so much more accepting. Now you can really talk about anything. Like but there are always going to be people who will slut shame you for posting, talking oh, yeah. about that. Like people call oh, yeah. me an alcoholic that I need to go to rehab. And it's like, you know, I'm just like in college having fun, even though I'm a college dropout. And I'm just like yeah, doing this and whatever. So. <laughs> but do you have advice for younger people? Because you seem so confident and like so sure of yourself now. How do you get to that point? Or what do you think is a good a good just like line to tell someone who's coming to college they're so unsure of themselves they want to be someone new how did you do it and how did you find yourself to be so confident now I think and again this is going to sound cliche but it really just came down to me sitting down with myself and thinking does anybody's opinion really fucking matter Mm -hmm. at all like it doesn't nothing matters. Oh, i know like, literally I, I say it all the time matters. we live like, on a floating rock and even you could be the biggest asshole you could be the nicest person in 20 years none of it's gonna fucking matter when you're dead no one's really it's sad to think about but it's but true unless you're martin luther king no one's but gonna it's fucking true. remember you so do whatever makes you happy and there's always going to be someone who has a problem with what you do no matter what oh yeah like I you mean, could be a saint and somebody's gonna be like well i don't like you because she's too nice she's hiding yeah something. she's too nice like i just oh, she's gotta be hiding something no like do whatever the fuck you want because at the end of the day the only person's opinion that matters is your own exactly and if you love yourself like fuck yeah what everybody it, else it, it was hard for me to like i've always been uh, in high school i was insecure and i didn't really i wasn't sure of myself in the way that i am now where i cared way more what people thought about me yeah i was so worried about you know being popular and just like having all the friends that i did doing the cool things hanging mm-hmm. out with the cool people and when i got when I was going to college and all of that was gone, I was like, holy shit, none of that really mattered. Like high school did not fucking matter. What I did in high school, the, the, if I was cool or if I wasn't, that's all gone. No one's going to remember that. So when I went into college, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, no one, it's not a popularity contest anymore. Yeah. If, if you have good memories, that's all that's going to matter. I, I wouldn't want to look back at my college experience and be like, 
oh, I was just fighting to be cool. I wanted to go to the cool parties, wanted to exactly. be with the, the cool people, with a football player, a frat boy. Like when you look back at it, it's so stupid to waste so much time trying to pretend that you're someone you're not. And another thing that I've learned is when you are looking for something, you're not going to find it. Oh, 100%. Everything, happens, everything positive happens when you are least expecting it. I didn't have any friends in high school and I was constantly thinking about what other people thought of me. Mm-hmm. And then I came to college and I finally stopped giving a fuck. And now like I have so many opportunities. I'm so fucking happy with where I am. And even like with relationships, like mm-hmm. when I look to be a serial dater and I like look for relationships and mm-hmm. look to always have a boyfriend, like how does that end up? Like <laughs> I get broken up with or like it ends really badly. But like when I stopped looking like, I don't know. Good things just come your way when you're least expecting it. I'm the biggest advocate for don't look for it. Like, exactly. especially relationship wise, if you're out there, I need a boyfriend. I need to go get my man. I need to find my husband. <laughs> exactly. It's like, dude, no, because then you're just gonna, you're gonna latch onto the first person that gives you attention. Exactly. It's not going to be the person you're supposed to be with. It's always organic when yeah. I think relationships are the best when your friends first, it just kind of falls into place and you're not out there. Where's my ring? I need my man. It just exactly. never works that way. Like once I learned to be completely content with myself and like comfortable with who I am, that's when I found like something good. You know what I mean? So it's just, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's all about being patient. I feel like. I think so too. Patient, patience is virtue. And I, I feel like we're saying like a lot of corny shit or like cliche shit. But it's true. Shit, it's but so it really true. is so true. Like there's so many sayings that I hate so much. Like everything happens for a reason, whatever. But like I always say my biggest regret was going, following a boy to college and like yeah. going to the small school that I went to. And then I look at it. I would have never found the boyfriend I do have now I don't think I would have ever started TikTok had the same content would have never been working for Barstool yeah. or sitting here at Penn State doing a dropout tour and talking to you <laughs> so like even though it sucked and maybe it was my biggest regret it led me in the direction I was supposed to be and as long as you make it a positive or even if you can laugh about it like I laugh about how weird my first relationship was and like yeah. how stupid I was if you're just sitting there like dwelling on it embarrassed about it make a fucking joke about it the, the exactly. best the only way my life works and the only reason I'm, I haven't <laughs> killed myself yet is because I just make jokes about it no genuinely and it's everything the only way is to get a joke through. to me but like I love it that way I do too you can find like laughter and like joy out of every single situation Humor and everything encounter. even bad sh- situations i'm like okay this is shitty but it makes for a great story exactly so a bad time you know good story not everything is going to be fucking amazing and i i started realizing i i wanted like a when i was doing this college tour i was like really stressed out because i'm like on and on and all my podcasts and just shit and my life has like done a complete 180 where i had yeah. such a simple life and I thought I was like missing how simple life was. And I just thought like life is never going to be back to normal, but you can always like go back to that. And I think it's just enjoy what you have right now instead of thinking about the future or wondering about the past. Definitely. And I feel like nothing in my life is the same right now as it was last year. So it's just a matter of really keeping in mind that like everything can change at any moment. So fast. It's so it crazy to think about yourself like two years ago compared to now. Yeah. You completely would different never fucking think. person. You would never Marching think. man bitch. Like, yeah. Come on. Like, come on <laughs> come that's on. fucking crazy. Now look at you. Well, it's fucking awesome. It was so great getting to know you. I loved having you on the pod. Thank you for having me. I had so Is much there fun. anything else you want to share or say to the girlies or anyone listening? Just fuck what everybody else thinks. Yes. I love that. And that's it. Okay. Um, where can everybody find you? At Sid Aaron on Instagram, okay. at Sid Doll Sign on TikTok, mm-hmm. and at Sid Doll Sign on Twitter. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yay.